Picture this. All of Earth's 500,000 elephants gathered together in one place. Multiply that by 400. I'll do the math. It's 200 million. 200 million elephants is the equivalent tons of food waste globally every year. July 15, 2021 was my first day as the executive director at Foodstash Foundation. Foodstash rescues good surplus food and redirects it to communities in a dignified way. At first, it was just another job. I was excited but ignorant to the scope of the organization. I didn't expect it to transform my relationship with food. But let's go back to those elephants for a second. I have a hard time envisioning half a million elephants, let alone 200 million of them. So try this. We each waste about 160 pounds of food every year. That's a whole person worth of wasted food. In Canada, 58% of food produced is wasted annually. More than half of what we produce is never eaten. I recycle, and I compost, and I try to buy local, and even I didn't know that. It's Canada's best kept secret. It's a local and global problem. Food waste is the third largest greenhouse gas emitter in the world. First, there's China. Then, the US. And then food waste. Greenhouse gas emissions are generated at every turn in the food system. Powering farm equipment, creating plastics, using refrigerants, producing fertilizers, and transporting food all over the world. And after all that, a huge portion isn't even eaten. The global emissions from food waste are three times worse than those from flying. Fighting climate change can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So it's pretty exciting that we can fight it by simply not wasting food. You wouldn't order your favorite pizza, eat half of it, and then throw the rest away, would you? On my second day of work, I rode along with a driver. I saw hundreds of pounds of peppers, strawberries, milk, steak, sourdough, all set aside to be donated because it couldn't be sold. Except it wasn't waste. It was really good food like fancy cheese at Whole Foods that makes you wince when you see the price good. <laughs> I have personally moved over three elephants of this wasted food, one box at a time. From the store cart, onto the scale, into the truck, and out to the community. But why? Why couldn't stores sell this food? Why wasn't anyone buying it? And why was there so much of it? The first culprit is aesthetics. When we shop, we envision cartoon like apples, peppers, carrots. We expect certain shapes, sizes, and colors, and we reject bumps and bruises. How many times have you picked up, inspected, and put back a pile of apples until you found the perfectly red, spherical, blemish-free one? But fruits and veggies don't grow according to what we want them to look like. They just grow. <laughs> Next time you're picking through that pile of produce at the store, Choose the funny-shaped one. <laughs> or maybe the one with a little bruise, so it doesn't get thrown away. 
The second culprit, date labels. When was the last time you half climbed into that grocery store fridge to reach the milk in the very back? Yeah, I know you've done it. <laughs> Just like we've been trained to look for aesthetic perfection in our produce, we've been trained to treat best before dates like expiry dates. They are not the same. In Canada, only five foods expire. Meal replacements, nutritional supplements, baby formula, liquid diets, and prescription low-calorie foods. Expiration dates are about reliable nutrition. You wouldn't give a baby expired formula or a senior expired supplements because you can't promise they'll get the nutrients that they need. But every single other type of food has a best before date. And best before dates are about freshness. So milk, eggs, yogurt, they're perfectly good to eat up to two weeks after their dates. Meat and seafood, if frozen by the date, can last at least six months. And shelf-stable products like cereals and condiments, they're not even required to have dates, and they can last for years. So the next time you're about to toss something, simply because of its date, just pause for a second. Do the old sniff and taste test. If it smells and tastes okay, it's probably perfectly fine to eat. And the third culprit behind avoidable food waste, hoarding. We generally have plenty of food, yet we buy more than we can eat, and we don't hesitate to toss something when we know we can easily get more of it. Overconsumption is in our DNA. It's in mine, anyway. My grandparents are Italian, so the only amount of food I know how to make is too much. <laughs> Just in case a couple extra people show up. When was the last time you were unpacking your groceries and you realized you bought milk, but you already had some? Or you had a really busy week and you just didn't get around to cooking that chicken? Or maybe you discovered a lemon in the back of your fridge and it now looked like a fuzzy tennis ball. Before your next trip to the store, try this. Plan out a couple of meals in advance and take a photo of your fridge and your pantry so you only buy what you need. When you come home, make an eat me first section in your refrigerator so you keep track of what needs to go sooner. And use your freezer. Toss those wilted greens in there and put them in your next smoothie or soup. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I promise it will pay off in less wasted food time, and money. I'm saying avoidable food waste because most of the time it is avoidable. But we're always going to generate some food waste. The average Canadian household wastes nearly $2,000 of food every year. I run a nonprofit that exists to reduce food waste, and even I throw food away. A gross smoothie that my husband made. Some leftovers I just couldn't bear to eat again. Or some forgotten herbs in the back of the fridge that turned into Nickelodeon-grade slime. <laughs> but you might have noticed I haven't talked about composting yet. Composting food is definitely better than it ending up in the trash, because food scraps in the landfill, they decompose quickly and in an anaerobic setting, which is science speak for there's no oxygen. That process, it creates methane, and methane is 80 times more harmful than carbon dioxide. So sure, compared to that, composting is great. And it can help absolve any guilt you're feeling for throwing that food away in the first place. But it should always be the last resort. Don't forget about all of the emissions that went into growing, packaging, and transporting your food in the first place before it was wasted. 
our food system and how we interact with it is a huge driver of climate change. And climate change is a daunting problem to fight. We're all supposed to eat less meat, stop flying so much, and conserve water. I'm neither a vegetarian nor a vegan. I get on a plane multiple times a year, and I live for long showers. But I've become a meal planning fanatic. I purposely seek out the ugly produce when I'm shopping, and I've learned to trust my senses over a date label. And despite what my husband says, I've gotten a lot better at eating leftovers. <laughs> so I'm not here to tell you that you're eating too much meat or that you're flying too much. There are a lot of everyday ways we can all have an impact. Compost as a last resort. Buy that ugly carrot. Rethink date labels. And eat your leftovers. Thank you.